This is Twit. Today on Triangulation, a good friend uh, and a repeat visitor to Triangulation. In fact, uh, she's a regular on many of our shows. Amy Webb is here. She's a professor of strategic foresight at the NYU Stern School of Business, the founder of the Future Today Institute, a futurist. In fact, the last time she was uh, on this show, she was here to talk about her book, The Signals Are Talking. She, Amy, welcome to uh, Triangulation. It's great to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, Amy's always a, a great guest on our show because, uh, um, A, because of her kind of focus on the future, which I think gives her um, a unique way of thinking about the things we're dealing with today. And, you know, we're all so mired in the middle of what's going on right now that we, we have a hard time kind of seeing our way outside of that. So it's really nice to get break out of that and get a better perspective. Uh, and and one of the things we talk a lot about with Amy is artificial intelligence. Her new book is called The Big Nine. The Big Nine are Google, IBM, Amazon, Facebook, Alibaba, Microsoft, Tencent, Apple, and Baidu. How the tech titans and their thinking machines could warp humanity. And uh, as as with all of Amy's writing, it's clear, it's precise, and it's very provocative. Who are the G Mafia? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just start right out of the gate. What's the G Mafia? Um, <laughs> so, so there are nine companies yeah. that are essentially responsible for the lion's share of patents, most of the funding, a lot of the IP. They're partnered with universities um, that are essentially creating the future of AI, and as a result making decisions about the future of humanity. So three of them are in China. Those are the BAT, Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent. And the other six are what I call the G-Mafia. Those are based in the United States. So that's Google, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Facebook, and Amazon. And, you know, they do kind of function as a mafia uh, in the truest sense of the word. I'm not necessarily meaning it to be pejorative. It's not a crime um, family, but it is a family. Right. They right, operate right. in concert. That's right. Um, you know, and for the most part, it doesn't mean that Salesforce and LinkedIn aren't also doing really interesting things or NVIDIA building out really interesting chipsets or, or all the rest of it. But um, it's these companies that are building uh, the custom silicon. They're, they're building chips. It's their frameworks. It's increasingly their AI clouds um, that, that are uh, ushering us into the future. And of course... All of it is predicated on data, and they own the lion's share of our data as well. That's one thing that's interesting. In the past, uh, innovation often comes from garages and unexpected places and small companies. In fact, it's often been thought that big companies are incapable of innovation because of the innovator's dilemma, their stake in the, the way things are as opposed to the way things might be. But this is very different. It's really those, these are massive companies. Is it only giant companies that can do this kind of thing? Yeah, so that's a great question, uh, and I think a really smart point about innovation. Um, I, we're definitely seeing innovation in the field of AI coming from multiple different directions, and not just startups, but people working in different fields like healthcare. So there's plenty of innovation happening, but all of it connects in some way to one of those nine companies, uh, and that is because you're either using their cloud or you're using TensorFlow, which is right. Google's um, framework. You're, you're, you are in some way tethered to these organizations and the organizations are essentially building out the tools and the frameworks um, that are intended to make optimal decisions um, to, to optimize but they're not necessarily optimizing um, on behalf of all of us which is a bit of a problem it's interesting isn't it because you mentioned tensorflow amazon apple microsoft all have platforms that they invite researchers to use and uh, there, there's, you know, there's a lot to be said for things like TensorFlow. You get a lot of power for very little money, great data processing capabilities. Is it all really just an attempt to co-opt whatever's going on and make sure it's happening under their roof? Yeah, so I, I want to make this point very clear because I realize the title of the book sounds quite ominous. Um, yeah. So I don't, yeah, so 
So I don't think that these companies are out to get us. I do not believe Google to be evil. I don't think that there is a small group of minions working for Bezos over at Amazon who are intentionally building systems that could in some way cause harm to humanity in the future. I don't think that's what's happening. I think what's happening is that in the United States, we have a concentration of people building these systems um, at publicly traded companies. And publicly traded companies have responsibilities to their shareholders and shareholders and investors have been made huge promises about how much uh, AI is going to deliver, whether that's a new products and services um, or automated systems or human longevity. And, and what's happening is that there's a lot of impatience. And so, um, you know, as a result of that, um, Wall Street, I think, is calling a lot of the shots. Oh. And people who are working in the trenches, um, you know, who who may say, you know, let's take a little bit of time and see if what we're doing is going to create future risk. Or let's talk about interoperability and making sure that all of these systems can talk to each other so that in the future, individual data is not being held hostage. You know, um, there's not the time to do that and there's no financial incentive to mm -hmm. do it because of our market driven economy. Mm -hmm. um, so so I, I, I think that's what's going on. And I, and I um, there's so much competition that uh, again, I think that a lot of decisions are being made quickly or under duress and I think that's when it comes to something like AI, which is not a single technology, but many technologies predicated on making decisions uh, on our behalf. I think it's it's a good idea for us to stop for a few minutes and ask about you know what does it all mean? Right.